After watching this video, you should have a fundamental understanding of how you can use the kinetic description of the equilibrium state and a thermodynamic description of that state to build explanations of how a system at equilibrium changes once perturbed. In other words, if something is added or removed from the reaction in the state of equilibrium. We're going to be focusing on a solution that's a weak acid at constant temperature and be asking the question, how does the pH change if So imagine we want to determine how the pH changes when we add A minus or the conjugate base of the weak acid to this system when it's at equilibrium. Well, to build a thermodynamic argument for describing what happens to the pH and the concentrations of the various species in this reaction, we're going to focus in on the equilibrium constant expression. And in particular, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this concept of Q versus K. Remember that when these values equate to the equilibrium constant value at a given temperature, the system is at equilibrium from a thermodynamic perspective. If these values do not equate to this value, then we can say that it's in a non-equilibrium state, or we would call what this value would be Q. And if that value Q is less than K, that means that in relation to the reactant side, we have too few products making this number smaller than K. And we can say in general then that the reaction will proceed towards the product side until equilibrium is reestablished. Conversely, if we find that the Q value is greater than K, then the reaction will proceed towards the reactant side until equilibrium is reestablished. And we can use this Q and K concept here to then make predictions about what happens to each of these concentrations and, of course, what happens, therefore, to the pH. So let's first look at what happens if we add A minus into this system. Well, if we add A minus, we're increasing the concentration of this product right here, which is in the numerator of the equilibrium constant expression. That will force Q to be greater than K once the system is perturbed. We know that if Q is greater than K, the system will shift towards the reactant side until equilibrium is reestablished. In doing so, the value of A minus, the concentration, initially goes up because we added some, and then will steadily drop. But the concentration of H3O plus will just go down until equilibrium is reestablished. So we can say that because this goes down, we know that that equates to the pH going up. So by adding in the conjugate base, the net result is the pH goes up. And we can build a thermodynamic argument based on the Q versus K description. So in building a kinetic argument for a perturbation to equilibrium, we focus on the kinetic definition of the equilibrium state. And that is when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. The kinetic description of equilibrium is very dynamic. We consider that the reaction is still going. In other words, products are being formed and reactants are being formed. But the rate of exchange of these two, or the rate of formation, is equal so that these concentrations remain constant as we would monitor them. So based on this definition, now I can make predictions about what would happen to the pH of this system at equilibrium when I perturb it or add certain species into this reaction. So let's first consider the addition of A minus and what would happen to the pH if we add A minus. Well, we know that if we add A minus, according to the kinetic argument, that the rate forward is no longer going to be equal to the rate reverse. And in fact, by adding A minus, the rate of the reverse process will suddenly be faster than the rate of the forward process. This will cause the concentrations of the reactants to go up and cause the concentrations of the products to actually go down until these rates re-equilibrate. Well, the addition of A minus means that the A minus concentration initially gets a bump and then it comes back down as until the rates are equal again. But the H3O plus concentration just steadily goes down as the rate of the reverse process is faster until the rates equilibrate. So therefore, because the H3O plus concentration goes down and ends at a lower value, we will predict that the pH of the system will go up.
Now let's imagine we add HA to the system at equilibrium and we build a thermodynamic description of what happens to the H3O plus concentration and of course how that affects the pH. So adding HA to the system will cause the denominator of the K expression to be larger upon the perturbation, which means that Q will end up being less than K. If Q is less than K, then we know that the system will proceed towards products until equilibrium is reestablished. So as a result, we know that if we proceed towards products, that the H3O plus concentration will go up. And when once equilibrium is established, this value will be larger, the concentration, which means that the pH will go down. And this should make sense. We know that if you add more acid to a system, that the pH goes down and the H3O plus concentration goes up. Now imagine we add some of the HA to the reaction when it's at equilibrium. We want to build a kinetic argument of what happens to the pH. Well, addition of HA will cause the forward reaction's rate to suddenly be higher than the reverse reaction because this value goes up. Therefore, because the forward reaction's rate is higher than the reverse reaction, we will see a steady increase in the concentration of the products until the rates re-equilibrate. And that results in the H3O plus concentration going up. And we know when the H3O plus concentration goes up, the pH will go down. And when the rates re-equilibrate here, the H3O plus concentration will be higher than its original value. All right, now let's think about what would happen to the pH if we were to add OH minus and how we can build a thermodynamic explanation for the change in pH. Before I start to build a thermodynamic argument, let's just think logically what we would predict to happen if we add OH minus. Of course, we know OH minus is a strong base, so adding that to a solution, a weakly acidic solution, is going to cause the pH to go up. We know that, so now let's verify that the thermodynamic argument supports what we know is true about this. And so I'm going to focus in on the H3O plus concentration here. And if you remember that when I first began the discussion of acid-base theory, we talked about the playing field or water and the fact that water has this autoionization reaction that is occurring and we have a very small amount in pure water of H3O plus and OH minus and the extent of this reaction is described by the KW we know that number is small 1 times 10 to the minus 14th at 25 degrees C so therefore because it's very unfavored in the forward direction we can assume it's very favored in the reverse direction so much so that we can just make the statement that adding OH minus is essentially equivalent to removing H3O plus through this reverse reaction. So now let's kind of reframe this question. Adding OH minus is essentially removing H3O plus. Let's write our equilibrium constant expression right here. Ka is equal to the A minus times the H3O plus divided by the HA concentration. Now removing H3O plus will cause Q to become less than K, making the denominator larger than the numerator. Therefore, the reaction will proceed towards products until equilibrium is reestablished. Now, that implies that removing this suddenly increases the concentration of A minus, which is true, but also we will recover some of the H3O plus removed. But the very important point here to make is that we will not get back to the original H3O plus concentration or the original amount per unit volume. We will take away H3O plus quantitatively by adding OH minus and we'll produce some more as the system re reaches equilibrium by producing more products. But the A minus value sort of compensates for the loss of H3O plus because it isn't formally taken away. And so when K is reestablished, this value is definitely higher, the H or the A minus. The HA has gone down, and the H3O plus initially goes down and then returns back up maybe a little bit, 
but overall this value has, is lower than its original value. Therefore, the pH goes up because the H3O plus concentration goes down. Now imagine we add OH minus into the system and we want to build a kinetic argument for what happens to the pH. We're going to focus here again on how the rates forward and the rates reverse change upon addition of this. Well, OH minus, just like with the thermodynamic argument, addition of it essentially removes H3O plus from the equilibrium expression because we know that OH minus reacts essentially quantitatively with H3O plus. So every one of these we add will consume one of these in the reaction to form water. That's what we can assume. So in essence, we are removing H3O plus and lowering the rate of the reverse reaction. Now that's interesting because that actually implies that the rate of the forward reaction would suddenly be faster, and that's true. We would therefore see a concentration change of A minus. It would go up, and the H3O plus concentration would go down initially quite a bit and maybe come back up, but the increase in the concentration of A minus would compensate enough such that the rates forward and rates reverse would re-equilibrate with this concentration being lower than its original value. So even though we prompt by adding OH minus the forward rate to suddenly be faster than the reverse rate, the increase in the A minus concentration compensates for the loss of H3O plus, and when the rates re-equilibrate, re we have less H3O plus in concentration than we had to start. Therefore, the pH goes up. Now let's consider the addition of water. Imagine we dilute this solution by adding water when it's at equilibrium, and we want to know what happens to the pH. And before I build the thermodynamic argument here, your common sense will likely tell you that diluting an acid or putting more water in should cause the pH to go up. And that is true. So now let's build the thermodynamic description of why that occurs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on the equilibrium constant expression again. And now when I write the equilibrium constant expression, of course, water is not included in this because we assume that that concentration remains constant. And so it's sort of wrapped into the Ka expression for the weak acid. But it does actually affect the molarity since these are mole per liter values here, here, and here. So we have to consider those volume changes, and we can use that to build an explanation of how Q is with respect to K once we initially dilute the solution. So now, if I, for example, double the volume in each of these molarity expressions, notice that the volume change will have a more dramatic effect on reducing the overall concentrations of the products because they're multiplied times each other. Put simply, the numeric value of the numerator in the K expression will go down more than the denominator will. Therefore, Q will turn out to be less than K upon the dilution. Therefore, we can say that the reaction will proceed towards the products until equilibrium is reestablished. And let's think about that up here. Well, that means that we would actually shift the reaction towards the products, and that might imply that we produce more H3O+. Plus. And actually, that's true. But here's the catch we actually do produce more H3O plus in total count, as if I could count the H3O plus ions, but the change in volume is much larger than the amount change of the H3O plus. In other words, the volume goes up more than the H3O plus concentration goes up, which means the molarity or amount per unit volume goes down. So because of that, the pH goes up. Therefore, adding H2O will cause the pH to go up and the moles per liter value of the H3O plus to go down, even though the actual total amount of H3O plus increases. And finally, let's consider what happens if we add H2O to this system or dilute this weakly acidic solution and build a kinetic argument to what happens to the pH. 
So I'm going to focus again on the rates forward versus the rates reverse. And in the way I have the rate forward and rate reverse expressed here, I can simply say that by adding H2O, I increase the probability of an HA and an H2O interacting to form products. So the rate of the forward process should go up with re respect to the rate of the reverse process. This implies that these values actually go up. And in fact, the H3O plus amount, not molarity, but count, for example, would actually increase by adding H2O. But the volume change associated with adding H2O is larger than the net increase in the amount of H3O plus ions. As a result, because we have moles per liter, this value will go up a little bit, but this value will go up much more. And when the rates re-equilibrate, when the rate forward is equal to the rate reverse, the net result will be that this value will be smaller, the molarity that is. So because the molarity goes down, the pH goes up. A little bit tricky building a kinetic argument on how I have this with water, but it really focuses again on the fact that even though the amount of H3O plus goes up, the volume change is much more significant and a dominant factor.